Do you guys know about how universities and colleges are using neoliberal multiculturalism to de-radicalize student activism so it fits within a framework of market competition that maintains class inequality? You don't? Because you're not paid to sit around all day reading about dense, wonky-ass, life-force-diminishing political concepts that little by little crush one's spirit into dust like I am? Well, whose fault is that? According to Aviva Chomsky, famous political philosopher Noam Chomsky's eldest daughter, a waka cacao! Universities employ a plethora of consulting firms and create new administrative positions to manage diversity and inclusion. Workshops and training sessions proliferate, as do safe spaces and trigger warnings. Such a vision of diversity is then promoted as a means to prepare students to compete in the global marketplace. Whoa, she's just as heady as her dad. I hope that wasn't a microaggression. Let's define our terms. We all know what multiculturalism is. But what's neoliberal? It sounds positive, right? Like new progressive, but it's not. It's exploitative free trade, and not the good type of free trade, like getting sex for having abs. It's the Ronald Reagan model of free trade, which is getting fucked for being poor. According to political scientist, don't hold his first name against him, Adolph Reed Jr., if class is left out, race politics on campus becomes the politics of the left wing of neoliberalism. It promotes a moral economy in which 1% of the population controlling 90% of the resources could be just, provided that roughly 12% of the 1% were black, 12% were Latino, 50% were women, and whatever the appropriate proportions were LGBT people. Basically, massive economic inequality is cool as long as the 1% is... So that's neoliberal multiculturalism. It's pandering to identity politics, like recognition of race, gender, and sexuality, as a means of maintaining a system of class power. I guess capitalist fuckery just doesn't sound academic enough. Aviva Chomsky goes on to say, the more that students, with the support of college and university administrations, accept the individualized cultural path to social change while foregoing the possibility of anything greater than cosmetic changes to prevailing hierarchies on campus and beyond, the more they face ridicule from those on the right who present them as fragile, coddled, privileged whiners. No! You're telling me the right wing takes cheap shots at the burgeoning millennial movement for social and economic justice? The campus, once an exchange of ideas, is now a daycare center for outrage merchants gurgling vitriol, donning full diapers of non-thinking hate. He said hatefully. But hey, maybe that mean-spirited gargoyle makes a point. Not the point he was trying to make, which essentially is, shut up and take it! but a different point. Historian Robin Kelly says, today's protests, even as they push for measures that would make campuses more hospitable to students of color, operate under a contradictory logic that is seldom articulated. To what extent, he wonders, does the student goal of leaning in and creating more spaces for people of color at the top of an unequal and unjust social order clash with the urge of the same protesters to challenge that unjust social order? This I do not know. But I do know that even if you're a hardcore leftist comedian, you can't walk onto a college campus and say, hey, who wants to see my microaggression? Don't worry, I'll provide a trigger warning before I explode. Just let me put my PTSD's nuts inside the safe space between your thighs. Even if you're clearly being ironic, they will burn you alive. John F. O'Donnell, Redacted Tonight.